ladies and gentlemen, it has been one hell of a day already and it's not even one o'clock. I woke up at 9.19. I'm big into the angel numbers, if you know, you know. So I felt like that was like a positive vibe, but it quickly went downhill. You know how a lot of people, um, before their period comes, they get irritable and grumpy and snippy and tense and your limits for what bother you goes down by like a hundred percent and it feels entirely out of your control. Like it is literally a hormonal thing. I get that at the end of my period for one day and one day only and today, ding, 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 is my lucky day. I was actually supposed to get my period today, but it came four days early. Today is Wednesday, it came on Saturday morning. So it came real early and at the time I was like, oh great, now I'm not gonna have my period and be super bloaty and crampy on the day of my speech, completely forgetting that instead I would be really grumpy and irritable. I literally get like tense, my jaw feels tight, my chest feels tight, it's hard to breathe, like I feel tense all over and just irritable. And I'm not an irritable person, so it's the worst feeling and I always know exactly what it is. It's such a distinct feeling, I only ever feel it this one time of the month and I hate it. So today's that day. And normally I'd say, why don't you just stay in bed today? <laughs> Stay in bed and rest. But, but I can't. No. Today is my first keynote speech back in over three years. My last, well, actually, my last live speaking engagement was last week, but it was a fireside chat, so I was just being interviewed. This is my first keynote, and I realized I kept saying my last speaking event was March 8th, which is true, but that was also just a panel. I quite literally can't tell you when my last keynote was. Probably early, five years ago. Early, no. No? It wasn't five years. That's dramatic. It was like <laughs> early. You think I'm dramatic? Where did I get it from? I honestly you? can't remember. I can't remember. I was supposed to have a speaking engagement for a corporation on March 11th, 2020, but it got canceled because of lockdown. Hey, bestie. Honestly, this is my first keynote in like definitely well over a year, and I've been doing virtual over a year? speaking. Sorry, well over three years. Yeah. I've been doing virtual speaking, but all of those are fireside chats or panels. Like I have not done a keynote. And I've been a public speaker since I was five, went part-time in high school, became full-time at 18. This is my world. This is something people used to always be like, don't you get nervous? Don't you get anxious? And I was like, no, it never made me anxious because I would do it up to 10 times a week. Like it was, I was at the point with my speeches where they were so second nature that I would be doing my full performance. And in my head, I was like, do I want pasta or sushi tonight for dinner? Maybe I'll sit down with a glass of wine. Like I would just be like in autopilot. I am not that anymore. I am so stressed and nervous. So the hormones aren't helping. It's a gray rainy day. I have seasonal affective disorder, like pretty dang bad. So the weather does genuinely, genuinely really affect me outside of my control as well. Like it's awful. I I have coping skills, but it's not easy. And so it's been gray, so I, th I that's contributing, but for sure it's mostly hormones. I'm on like a hormone treatment. I have been for, I wanna say almost two years now. And it's only been since then. And I spoke to my doctor about it and she said it's the one of my levels, I think it's the progesterone just drops so sharply that it just, I plummet a little bit. So it is what it is. Um, but I woke up, I just kind of slowly got myself awake, I scrolled TikTok, I ate my breakfast in bed, just trying to take it easy. My car comes to pick me up in an hour at two. I did my keynote. I was word perfect. I nailed it. I have been writing this keynote since the end of January and today is March 15th. So I've been working on this for a long time. Writing a compelling keynote is not easy. I do write custom speeches for all of my clients, but traditionally I have my kind of skeleton that I work off of. So my longest presentation is an hour, which consists of 45 minutes of speaking and 15 minutes of Q and A. And then I have them everywhere from there to like three minutes, you know? And this one is 30 minutes with a Q and A afterwards. So because I haven't done a keynote in many, many years, I haven't written a new keynote in many years. I usually try to write a new keynote every three years to update it, make it relevant to who I am and whatever, what I'm usually getting booked to speak about. This is the first keynote that's written solely for corporate because that is the only audiences I speak to now. I basically only do corporate speaking now. And it's all about authentic diversity, equity, inclusion, representation, and accessibility, universal design, 
all of that kind of stuff. Whereas my old speeches were much more bullying, mental health, warm and fuzzies, uplifting, motivating. This is like actionable items, statistics, studies. Like uh, it's very different. So I'm excited. I think I wrote a really freaking good speech and I'm really proud of it. It took me a lot of work and I've got it down to like around the 30 minute mark. It might be like a few minutes over, which is fine. I'm really proud of it. I've been memorizing it and getting it performance ready for the past two weeks. I definitely hit a wall at one point was like, I quite literally think I need to like be sick and can't do this. Like I'm so anxious, but I broke through. I feel really good about it. This speech deserves to be heard and I'm ready. And you're just a conduit. Yes. I'm a vessel, I'm a conduit for the words and the message to flow through. It's not about me, it's about the audience and what they need to hear. So specifically this audience is a private dinner, it's a private corporate dinner to 50 CEOs and like very high up people at Fortune 500 companies. So a very important audience that has the power to make a lot of change if I can impact them in the right way to do so. So I'm very excited. The smaller the audience, the harder it is. The bigger the audience, the easier it is because big audiences give you energy, small audiences take your energy. So it's not the ideal for my first live presentation back with a new speech. And dinners are always difficult because you hear like the clinking of the glasses and the cutting of the knives and people dropping dishes in the back of the kitchen. So they're not the easiest. But I feel that if I can nail this, I can definitely nail like a corporate audience of a thousand people at a conference where they're all just sitting in chairs listening to me. So it's a good test. I've performed it twice for friends. It went well both times, so yeah. We had a little hiccup this morning. My outfit that I planned to wear, oh I got the, speaking of hiccups, Jesus. The outfit I planned to wear did not pan out. My mistake, I should have tried it on days ago, I didn't. So that was stressful, but we pivoted, found something new. Uh, I did the speech, I did my vocal mist. You guys know I have a lot of vocal issues. So I did my vocal mist, this is what it is. I'm bringing it with me. I'm, I have to drive like an hour to two hours away. I have a car service picking me up. So we're gonna pack my dress and shoes. It is a cocktail attire business event. So I'm just gonna wear like this comfy Lululemon lemon outfit with my Crocs in the car. I'm gonna bring my headphones, listen to pump up music, zone out. I'm doing my vocal exercises right now. I'm slashing myself with water. That's okay, I'm warming up the vocal cords. I'm loosening the throat. I'm gonna have some tea with Manuka honey. I'm bringing my lozenges with me, doing all my right things for my vocal cords. And now I'm just gonna sit down, do my makeup, something that brings me joy. I'm gonna to attempt to eat. I'm stressed, it's always a little hard to eat when you're stressed, but that's that. I don't know if this is interesting at all, but a lot of people are curious about what it's like to be a professional speaker. And this is my reality of being a professional speaker in this moment right now. Uh, looks a little bit different than it used to, but we're getting back into it. And I know that when I have that mic in my hand and I'm performing, I'm gonna feel like I've come home because there's no place I feel more alive and more myself and more passionate than when I'm on stage with a microphone in hand. I'm really excited to get back to doing something that I've loved literally my entire life and hopefully get more live bookings again and like get to be back doing this, so. All right, doing my makeup now. I am currently like kind of packing makeup with me because like I said, it's just after one o'clock now and my speech isn't till 6.30. I fly all over the world for speaking. Um, thankfully, this one's actually just in Anaheim, so it was nice and close. Um, but depending on traffic, it can be up to a two hour drive from where I live in Los Angeles. So we are going to be getting our car extra early because obviously everybody would rather I be there early than late. Um, in case anybody is wondering, I work with UTA, United Talent Agency. They are my speakers bureau. That is the only speakers bureau I am on. If you ever see me on any website claiming that they book me as a speaker, they do not. Speaking industry is weird. I am only with UTA. You can either like book, kind of reach out through my website and you will get sent on to UTA or you can go through UTA directly. And that is who books my speaking. I mainly, like I said, just do corporate now. Sometimes I'll do some film things um like non-for-profit but mostly it uh it's just corporate i get asked a lot about the speaking industry i love talking about the industry like i've been you know fully professional in this business for 11 years now and kind of building towards it for many more my whole childhood basically you speak for free for a long time before you get paid and that is normal speaking can be a highly paid industry when you are at a high level and you've been doing it for a long time and you've made a name for yourself in the business but you speak for a long time for free 
then you kind of get into generally like honorariums where it's like pay me what you can but please suggest me to other events and then it kind of becomes a small fee that grows from there speech writing is a whole other thing you can hire a professional speech writer lots of people do that there is no shame in that game many people are great speakers and have great stories and messages but they're just not great writers and that's totally fine i personally have written all of my own speeches through the years and i have written many i do have certain structures that i follow kind of skeletons that i base my speeches off of like i said i do custom for every event but generally i'm booked for like the same grouping of topics um, so then I just plug and play stories and messages within that. This is my little Moomin makeup bag. It's so freaking cute. Elton got it for me for Valentine's Day. And in here I am just bringing one concealer because I have a little bit of hormonal breakout right now. This is the Ethereal Light by Too Faced. I have my little powder puff from, uh, oh my god, Real Techniques. And then I have my Kosas Cloud Set powder. Um, just putting a couple things that I'll probably need to touch up. Or potentially need to touch up later, I'll bring some deodorant because you know I'm going to be sweating and nervous. I'll just grab that now, actually. It's the native one. I always pretty much wear, like, some kind of more natural deodorant, but today I did put on, like, my Dove spray deodorant because I was like, I'm going to be sweaty and nervous. I need the good stuff. I'm going to put probably, like, my hairbrush in here. And I'm bringing uh, my dress and shoes with me, Elton's dog food, since I'm speaking at 6.30. Typically, um, I am at the point in my career where I'm usually, like, the headline speaker at events. So I am like the main speaker. Um, usually conferences, like there's many speakers and breakout sessions and blah, 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 but they usually have one kind of keynote headline speaker. So that is typically the position that I fill usually at this point. And generally that's gonna be either the opener, you are the first thing that sets the tone for the entire conference. And I'm usually speaking pretty early in the morning in those circumstances. Um, or you are the closer, you are ending the entire event. Um, so if it's a multi-day event, that's usually just in the afternoon or midday, uh, or if it's just a one-day event, sometimes that's in the evening. I'm really happy that the event is local for me for my first one back and also is an evening event because I am a night person. My brain fires better at night. It's giving me lots of time to like get ready, relax, do all my vocal warm-ups and like just not rush, which is really nice. Sorry, this is such a weird angle because I do my makeup this direction, but my tripod can't like fit in there. My mom picked my, uh... I don't know, it says, it says something positive on it. I can't see it. What's it say on it? Shine on or something? I think it looks shine on, I believe. It's a sunshine. Yep, shine on. And it's lemon ginger tea with manuka honey, which is very good for the voice. I also have been drinking my coffee because your girl needs caffeine. This is from La La Land, which I believe is based out of Austin or somewhere in Texas. Um, but we just got it here in LA. Um, one at the Grove and one in Santa Monica. I think those are the only two locations. But yesterday I grabbed a coffee there and I wanted a hot coffee. And I, I said I wanted it hot, but apparently the one I ordered only came iced and I didn't know that. It was kind of like we both made a mistake. Like they, when I said hot, should have told me it only came cold. But also I should have known it only came cold and I ordered it hot. So it was like just a mix up and I was like, totally fine. I'll just take it iced. Like when I got it, I was like, oh, sorry, I wanted it hot. And they were like, oh, that one only comes iced. I was like, oh, no, no worries, my bad. I didn't realize. They were like, oh, no, we'll make you a different drink hot. So that was really sweet of them. Um, and they gave me this one to keep. So I just shoved it in the fridge. And it's really good. It's the Lala Latte. It's like a honey milk latte. I got it with soy milk. It's like a cute little sippy cup almost. I don't know, it's really cute. It's a very like positive place. It's all like good vibes. I'm gonna do a pink blush because I am doing a pink and purple pastel outfit. I am like really making a dent in this blush. This has been my holy grail go-to blush since it came out, but it was limited edition. So I'm not even gonna bother telling you what it is because it basically doesn't matter. I was listening to some music by Jordy to pump me up. By the way, this is a makeup brush cleaning mat if you want to transition colors, but you don't have time to actually clean your brush. I've been doing a lot of coral blush and I'm switching to pink, so I'm just like cleaning the residue that might be on here off onto this. It's from Sigma. I'm obsessed. Um, with speaking, you can be repped by, by speakers bureaus, but you can also just speak privately, like have your own website, take your own bookings. I would recommend that to be honest, unless you have a very good bureau that you have a very close relationship with. I don't typically find them very good, which is why I just have my one agent, love them, they're great. Oh my God, I didn't do my bronzer, what the heck? Launching right into the blush. I always do bronzer first, I'm all out of sorts. So sorry, I'm jumping all over the place with topics. Let me know if you have any specific questions. Other things that I get asked a lot is like just general tips and tricks. If you 
wants to become a more confident speaker, whether it's to do this as a career or whether it is just to be more confident doing work presentations or school presentations, I cannot recommend taking improv classes enough. I did about 10 years on and off of improv and stage performance and it's the best thing I ever did for myself because it gave me the confidence to know that if I completely forget my script, I'm gonna be totally fine. And that's that's the best thing ever. I So I do keynote speaking where it's like a proper speech. And then I also do fireside chats where I'm being interviewed. That is typically something I do. The discussion they want, the topics they want me to talk about are just so, so, so specific. that it's like, okay, it's gonna be really hard for me to write a speech that caters to that specific topic. So why don't you write questions for me and I will answer them in an interview. Um, and then I also do panels where I am like, a panelist on a panel with other speakers and we're all being asked questions. So those are really the three types of speaking that I do. I was listening to Jordy before I paused to talk with you guys while I do my makeup. Just ray of sunshine. He's a gay musician and he writes like gay love songs and stuff and I love it. But he also writes tons of other things that are great. But I love the representation for all my LGBTQ plus friends. He's just so sweet. His music's great. I found him on TikTok, I want to say like a year, probably two years ago. And I adore his music, so check him out. His music is mostly a lot of like upbeat stuff, but not all. It's a mix, but I was listening to the upbeat stuff. Oh, my mom's getting in the shower. You can probably hear that. I've also been listening to a lot of Dermot Kennedy, an amazing Irish singer, a lot of um, uh, Keen to Crow, another amazing Irish singer, Gotta Support My People, Lauren Spencer Smith, Blue Eyes, so many good ones. Anyways, I'm gonna do my makeup. Mom's gonna jump in the shower, and I'll probably see you when I'm in the car. Clearly, I am in the car now. Got the makeup on in my comfy clothes. We've got a little mini suitcase packed up with everything we need. We're heading to a hotel first where we can just kind of relax and get ready, and then we'll go to the venue around 4.30 for my sound check, and I'm feeling good. I've been listening to some Olivia Rodrigo. I just still love that whole Sour album. I feel like it's the album that only a teenager going through her first ever heartbreak could have written. It's like a time capsule of that emotion. And I went through my first breakup at 15, so I know it well. And it's just, it's such a cute album. I just love it. She's so talented. In case you're wondering, with speaking engagements, whether I'm, you know, flying to Europe and being, staying in a hotel, or whether it's local and I'm driving, uh, the client does pay all of those related expenses. So they pay my fee. And then on top of that, any expenses related to me getting to the engagement are covered at their cost. So that's how that end of things works. I'm feeling calm. I'm enjoying the music. I love a long drive. So right now, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready. All right, we finished the drive out with some Tate McRae and some Kim Petras, two girl bosses. Absolutely love both of them. Uh, in case you don't know, Kim Petras is like probably, I feel like one of the biggest trans pop stars. And I just, I'm so happy we're getting to a point in the industry where we're getting more representation for all communities. She's an icon. The song, Can't Do Better, so good. On Hollywood Sam Smith, incredible. Anyways, we're here at the hotel. Anaheim is where um, VidCon happens. So I've been to Anaheim many times and I've actually been to Morton's Steakhouse where I'm speaking for like VidCon parties. So I kind of feel like in a way, me, we're coming home. Yeah, it does feel like that, I have to say. It's a <laughs> nice place it's, to, yeah, it's to nice. come, isn't it? Yeah, it, is. it really is. All right, time to go get ready. All right, we've made it to the hotel. I just freshened up, um, quickly went through my notes. I am feeling cool, calm, collected. I'm feeling ready. I'm feeling excited. I can say that I firmly believe this is the best speech I've ever written, which I think is fair. Like, I'm 29, been in this industry for much longer now. I've seen a lot more. So I think that's reasonable, but I'm, I'm like really proud of it. And now I'm just like, yes, people need to hear this. I'm excited to deliver this message. You're gonna show us your change of effort? Yes, I am, of course. <laughs> Let me pump myself up. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of me. All that matters is that I'm a conduit to deliver the message to the right people. Okay. Now, this is what I'm wearing tonight. I have changed my outfit so many times today, but I feel like this was a good choice. I love this jacket. This is my sax pot jacket. It is yummy, delicious. I feel confident and chic every time I wear it. And then I obviously won't wear that when I'm actually speaking. This is the outfit underneath. It is like business cocktail, cocktail, cocktail <laughs> attire. I promise I'll be more eloquent on stage. But I feel like I didn't want to wear stilettos or anything. I didn't want to wear a tight dress. Like I just want to be comfortable so I can move, I can feel good. So I'm just wearing this pleated textured top. It is not Isimiyaki, I don't know the brand. It has these beautiful like watercolor flowers almost, I think. Yeah. And a little detailing. And then classic, iconic, you've seen me wear it a million times, my Isimiyaki please pants in black and my Prada loafers. Businessy but comfortable. 
give me like the teeniest bit of height. I need every little bit I can get. And I feel good in this. I feel like myself. And uh, I honestly never have to regret buying these expensive shoes and pants because they have proven their worth 10 times over. You've seen me wear them so many, so many times, and I have worn them many more times than that. So best Yay. purchases in my best purchases of all time list. Okay, Cara's coming to pick us up, bring us to the venue for the sound check. Let's go. I'm here, I've had an amazing evening so far. There's an incredible speaker going before me who I've been really excited to see, his name's Jonathan. And then it's, it's me. <laughs> It's but people here are so nice, Molly. They're all the sweetest people. I am still nervous, but it's gonna be fine. Jonathan's nervous too, which made me feel better. I am uh, I'm equal parts excited and nervous to be with you. This is my first live speaking event in three years. Under the social model, I'm not broken. I am whole as I am. What disables me is not my blindness. It is the barriers placed upon me by society. The way a blonde is different from a br brunette, I simply differ from somebody who can see. But the real cure for my blindness, the real cure for disability is accessibility. Because when I go to an accessible website that I can navigate independently, I don't feel disabled. But the opposite is equally true. When I'm confronted with a touch screen that is not screen reader friendly or does not connect to an accessible app, I feel disabled. But more than that, I feel like I don't matter. I feel invisible. I've posted so many videos online throughout the years where I hope that people can see the pure joy that I feel when I'm face to face with an accessible product or service for the first time. I feel like I'm not. I feel seen, I feel heard, but most importantly, it affords independence and dignity. At 29 years old, I am still experiencing basic forms of independence for the first time through accessibility. I'll never forget the first time that Apple released an iPod with voiceover their built-in screen reader. And for the first time, I could actually pick what song I wanted to listen to. I didn't have to scroll, spinning the wheel, randomly clicking and hoping I'd land on something I wanted to hear. Just last year, I worked with a chocolate company on creating an accessible brown chocolate box. And for the first time, I was able to read my options and find the one I wanted. Instead of having a sighted person read me my options and hand it to me or playing Russian roulette. And in these moments, I have to admit that I often cry when I experience these things because it is in those moments that I realize for most people, life is that easy. You don't have to think twice about what song you're going to listen to or what chocolate you're going to eat because you've always had the privilege to do those things independently. And that is the world that I dream of living in. Disabled people bring a unique set of skills to the workplace. So, I know. <laughs> it's been a long night. It's almost long. midnight. Yeah. By the way, I don't really like this. I'm sad. It was a, this is the um, Inky List cleansing balm. I'm not a fan, but I bought it, so I'll use it. I don't like the texture. I don't. Oh mind my it. god! All your Nick's underwear in the background. <laughs> Drying. <laughs> okay, so you're wondering. It's my period panties. It was a great night. Um, it went incredible. I'm really proud of myself. I shook the whole time. Because you were trying to follow my script, deal with Elton, who wanted to get up to be with me. And get social media. And get social media <laughs> clips. Even though, I don't know why he wanted to, I was literally five steps from him. I don't know why he was trying to get to me. I was five because steps. Because when you said Elton John at the beginning of the speech, of course he got up as a good guide dog would to go and help you. He said, yes, mommy, you called my name. So he got all wrapped up in his leash. <laughs> he was panicking to get to you. <laughs> five steps away. Anyways. But Molly was oblivious, so that's important. I wasn't oblivious every time my mom would film me. Bright light would <laughs> shine in my face. I wondered how that was going. It was so distracting. I kept trying to not look your direction. Well, you did ask me to do it, so I know it's I not did. like I was not like, with stay flash. mom. <laughs> not with flash. I should have said to Siri, can you dull the flashlight but you know there was so much going on my back was breaking I was like leaning over the script oh, woe is me. <laughs> it was 
so hard. Oh, and Molly was up there uh, acing it all. I didn't need to read the script at all. I did nail it. I'm really proud of myself. Um, the amount of people that were like, can I get a transcript of your speech? Can you come speak? Can, is there a video you could share of your speech? And I was like, no, this is it. This is the first time I'm being seen. <laughs> and um, just, yeah, like such a positive crowd. Like so sweet. The guy at the end was like, you were worth every penny. And that's like the highest praise. Like he was like, you, some things are worth the investment and you were worth the investment and I'm going to make this investment again. And I want to hire you again. And I was like, oh. Molly was close to not going sometimes. She was just like, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I was like, no, you, you're going to do it. You'll do it. And yeah, I'm just really, I'm proud of myself. The audience was incredible. Everybody was so sweet, so kind. Oh my God, they're so nice. It was unbelievable. Um... We so nice. people who were like, I've been following you for years, or my kids love you. Like, it was a lot of them were the kids. Mm -hmm. A lot kids. of them. And it was all like these men in their 50s. Or, like, it, it was like, oh my God, we're so excited to have you. My teenager, my teenager, teenager you. follows you. <laughs> it was really cute. Yeah. Um, the speaker before me, Jonathan, I know his daughter Jessica watches me. Thanks, Jessica. Hi, your dad's awesome. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Yeah, it just... It felt really good to be back doing what I love and like where I started before all of this situation happened. But and so many people were like, oh my God, it's so back to be good. So good to be back in a room with people and talking and. Yeah, so it was just, it was just great. And I'm really pleased and, and, and that's that. So, oh, it was really kind. A lot of people were like, you need to be the headline speaker next year. <laughs> for the whole conference, because I was speaking at a private dinner at the conference. They were like, you need to be the keynote for the whole conference. I'm going to write a letter. I'll pay for it. I'll <laughs> <laughs> we did. We had a great steak dinner. All was well, but I want to go to bed. No, Me too. No skincare routine. <sighs> right in the morning. 7 a.m. flight. Well, no. I'm being dramatic. I <laughs> 12 30. <laughs> Likes to ladle it on. <laughs> Molly has decided of her own free will to set her time like <laughs> alarm for No 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 I meant to seven. say I meant to say I have to get up. Most people get up at seven, Molly. I don't I get up at nine thirty every day. <laughs> I meant She's to say very bitter when she has to get up earlier than that. <laughs> That's why I run my own business name. Yep. I um I meant to say I have to get up at seven AM for a flight because you know, I'm trying not to show all the underwear. <laughs> Everybody wears undies. Well, actually, I rarely do. I don't think they will show it though to the to their followers. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> I think we're a little giddy. I'm high on exhaustion. Yeah, me too. Relief. Um, like I say, I shook through your hokey. <laughs> and my back was aching. Thanks for the sympathy stress. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I have that's our laundry. So I'm we're leaving at eight forty, eight fifty. So almost nine o'clock. Molly's wake up time. <laughs> if we're lucky. <laughs> so I'm getting up at seven AM. So I have time to like eat breakfast, do my makeup, do final packing. But mm -hmm. needless to say, I need to go to bed at midnight. And mm -hmm. your girl needs a lot of sleep. Me too, I'm about to collapse. Okay, good night. Good night. Thanks Love for coming with me, everyone. Click over here for my most recent video about my FU bag. Mm hmm Or over here for another one. And we're so sad we didn't bring it tonight, aren't we? Bye. It went on perfectly with the outfit. But I know. It's, we changed it three times, so. <laughs> it was last minute decision. There's a lot of panic. Okay. Bye.